Hello, Travel Bugs. Diane and Guillermo here again. We are two American expats who achieved financial independence and retired early in 2018. We are currently home-based in Lisbon, Portugal, and we usually share videos of us scouting cities around the world, searching for a place to make our home. But this time, due to many viewers' questions and a little CNBC video floating somewhere in the interwebs, we will share our early retirement story, how we achieved FIRE, and where our finances stand now in 2023 compared to 2018, the year we retired. Don't worry, this is only a two-part FIRE video series. In this first one, we cover how the idea of early retirement came about back in 2017, the preparation to reach financial independence, our retirement plan, and the tools and strategies that helped us get here. In the second video, we talk about living abroad, our monthly expenses in Mexico and Portugal compared to the United States. We discuss the dreaded tax considerations, our biggest regrets, and much more. We'll see how our finances look the past five years, flying high during a bull market, riding low in a bear market, and what the future holds for the four of us. We hope you find it interesting and useful. Remember, this is not financial advice. We are no experts. It's just our story. You should always consult a financial advisor for questions specific to your situation. If there's anything you'd like to ask about the topics we cover, drop us a comment or send us a message via our Instagram or Facebook accounts. And if you're interested in this type of life-changing achievement or just looking for inspiration to get there yourself, hit that like button and let's get started. We were living in Fairfax, Virginia back in 2017. I was working for a satellite company, doing 12-hour shifts. My sleeping was deprived, upside-down sleep. I was eating bad foods, fast foods. I wasn't going anywhere in my job. And I was losing all my motivation. We were also going through a rut that year after losing Diane's mom. I was still grieving the loss of my mom that passed away in 2016 from cancer. We were living in our new house that we'd just remodeled. Professionally, my real estate business was doing great and I had a small team. I enjoyed being self-employed and I really loved helping people buy and sell their dream homes. After caring for and losing my mom though, I was tired and sad and just needed a change. I was making good money and Diane was thriving at her job as a realtor. She handled all our investments and managed all our accounts. I didn't know enough about investing and finances to get too involved. I knew I was never short of money. My credit cards never got declined. I never asked questions. I was a good husband. I also contributed to my 401k plan to the maximum that I could. And luckily every employer matched my contributions over the years. I always contributed the most ever since my very first job 25 years ago. And someone told me back then to put the most I was allowed to into my 401k. So when I retire, I can enjoy the compound interest for, for the rest of my life afterwards. And that person actually was Diane when we were friends. That was her first advice about finances. Ever since we got married, we reviewed our accounts pretty much every year, rebalance our 401k if needed. But other than that, I think it was cruise control for all our finances. Well, my mom had taught me basic financial principles like having emergency savings, limiting your debt, living within your means. And I really learned some financial lessons the hard way in my 20s. My first husband didn't care about saving money. And unfortunately, the marriage and the restaurant we opened ended in disaster. And I had spent everything I had. After that, I never wanted to have issues with money again. And I knew two good ways to grow wealth were with the stock market and real estate. And although I am no expert, I was familiar with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. I've always had a high risk tolerance and invested 100% of our portfolio in stocks to grow it over the years. The thought of retiring early never crossed my mind. I come from a Latin background and you're supposed to work forever. <laughs> I was always taught to work hard and provide for my family, be the head of household, and work until I just can't work anymore. I, I gotta get to work. I watched my spending closely. I relied on my savings and my 401k plan and future social security benefits for when I retire at 65. 
The loss of my mom, my stepdad, and a really close friend to cancer made me realize that life really is short and you never know how long you have. I'd always wanted to retire in my 50s and now I didn't even want to wait that long. I started taking a really hard look at our finances and researching retirement and I came across the FIRE community and read books and blogs to educate myself. I knew it was going to take a lot to convince Guillermo we could do this. In fact, I knew it was going to be so difficult that I put together a presentation with best and worst case scenarios using personal capital and a spreadsheet. Oh, I was hooked. She really believed that this was possible. She put in the time to learn and motivated me a lot to follow. She assured me that our money would never run out if we play our cards right. We didn't have any debt other than low interest rate mortgages. We had good cash flow and equity in our rental properties, one of which was inherited. And we had a good amount in our retirement, brokerage, and savings accounts, and both our cars were paid off. We'd always steered clear of debt unless it was a mortgage, a very low auto loan, or small credit card charges. And most of our investments were in stocks or target retirement date funds. And later on, we purchased a small amount of cryptocurrency. I tracked our monthly budget on a spreadsheet and then Quicken over the years so we could review it and know where we stood at all times. Well, we'd already done most of the steps necessary for early retirement over the years. I mean, our debts were paid off, we'd been cutting expenses, earning and investing money, and really felt that our finances were in order. We'd been putting money aside for an emergency fund, and we just needed to increase that to cover our living expenses for two years. Most of this was going to come from the sale of our home and Guillermo's car. Now we just had to determine our retirement number and create a budget that included lots of travel. We used the 25x rule to confirm our retirement number. It's an estimate of how much you'll need to have saved for retirement. And it simply states that you need to save 25 times your annual expenses. So for example, if you want to spend $100,000 per year in retirement, you need to save $2.5 million. That's $100,000 times 25. Or if you want to spend $40,000 per year, you would need to save $1 million. $40,000 times 25. And remember, depending on the type of account the money's withdrawn from, you may owe income or capital gains tax. Keep in mind though, the 25X rule assumes you have no other sources of retirement income, such as a pension or social security, part-time work or rental income. And if you do, you may not need to save as much money to retire. We have three types of accounts to withdraw from for retirement that are each taxed differently. The first is taxable accounts. We have savings, checking, individual brokerage, and crypto accounts. And we'll pay taxes on any capital gains, dividends, or interest earned in these accounts. The second is tax deferred or pre-tax accounts. We consolidated our 401ks into IRAs over the years. And when we withdraw money, it will be taxed as ordinary income. However, as it's a retirement account, we must be over 59 and a half to avoid the 10% early withdrawal tax penalty. The third is after-tax accounts that we can withdraw from without owing taxes since we've already paid them. Only Roth contributions, not earnings, can be withdrawn penalty and tax-free before 59 and a half though. Once we confirmed we had enough money to sustain our quality of life, we determined our safe withdrawal rate thanks to another personal finance guideline, the 4% rule. The 4% rule says in the first year of retirement, you can spend 4% of your savings and then adjust that amount each year by the rate of inflation and your money should last at least 30 years. So for example, if you have 1 million in your retirement account when you retire, you can withdraw 40,000. That's 4% of 1 million in the first year. For the following year, if inflation is 2%, then you multiply last year's withdrawal of 40,000 times the 2% inflation to get an $800 adjustment for inflation. So you can withdraw the 40,000 plus $800 in the second year, and so on. Beware though, there are some things to keep in mind with the 4%. First of all, it does not account for investment fees. So if you pay a financial advisor the industry standard of 1% a year to manage your money, the 4% rule no longer works. 
you'd have to reduce your first year spending by 10% to account for that seemingly small 1% fee. Also, equity allocation is very important with the 4% rule. The success rate is based on a portfolio of 50 to 75% in stocks and the rest in bonds. And most importantly, the 4% rule is not a guarantee. It's possible that future markets and inflation could deplete a portfolio that follows the rule in under 30 years. But if the market is right when you retire, you could end up with much, much more in your portfolio. Still, it's a frequently used rule of thumb for retirement spending and a good starting point for us. Now we're ready to determine our retirement budget. So by applying the 4% rule to our portfolio, we could withdraw enough money each year to support the lifestyle we wanted and even be able to reduce our spending in years that the market's down. We knew travel would be a large expense for us, so we created a budget that would include it and could be drastically reduced or eliminated if needed. I also researched house sitting, where you take care of someone's home, plants, and their animals while they're away in exchange for board in their home. Also house swapping, where you exchange homes in order to experience other cities without the cost of accommodations. I started looking into credit card reward travel too, and we began applying for credit cards that would give us reward points to use towards flights and hotels. We already used credit cards anyway, and we paid them off every month, so why not take advantage of earning free travel? It takes a little time to educate yourself on the best cards and the best way to exchange points for travel, but I really, really wish we had done this before. We've been able to use reward points to cover many flights, including business class flights and hotels, saving us tens of thousands of dollars the last few years. We have a link to travel freely in the description below. We love using this site to track our reward points, annual fees, and to get the best credit card promotions. And it's free. It's not just diversification, it's also simplification. We decided to keep it really simple and only have low cost, broad market index funds. For example, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund aims to track the performance of the entire US stock market. It invests in thousands of companies across different sectors and industries, providing a diversified exposure to the overall stock market. Basically, you pretty much own a little piece of every company in the United States that's in the stock market. And the Vanguard Total Bond Market Fund invests in thousands of bonds across different sectors and maturities, providing investors with diversified exposure to the overall bond market. I was comfortable with a portfolio allocation of 70% in US stocks, 5% in international stocks, 20% in bonds, and 5% or less in crypto and individual stocks. We've also considered social security payments in our retirement planning, although many early retirees do not. Depending on whether or not you decide to take Social Security at an early age or full retirement age can make a large difference not only in your payout, but also how long you need to use your other sources until you start receiving the payment. Everything sounded exciting and I was ready, but we had to have a backup plan or a fellover move. We had to think about the possibility of another housing market crash, inflation, our money draining fast, emergencies, a zombie apocalypse. We drew out a fellover plan and included. We could lower our monthly living expenses and eliminate our travel budget. If the market's down for a long time, then we could move to an even lower cost of living city or country. If we're at Medicare age, we might consider moving back to the USA into one of our rental properties or selling it and buying a home somewhere else in the USA to live. If necessary, we could sell one or more of our rental properties. But the very last resort would be to get a job again. I went down the rabbit hole checking and double checking our plan and inputting information in the planners. We use different tools to help us keep track of all our finances and investments. From a net worth calculator, to our retirement and budget planners. Empower, formerly known as personal capital, was a game changer for us. It allowed us to have a bird's eye view of all our finances. It showed us the net worth projections in upcoming years based on historical market behavior data. Personal capital was free and easy to use. 
I like that it uses Monte Carlo simulations to determine best and worst case scenarios of where your money will be, and it allows you to create multiple retirement possibilities. For example, if we were to sell one or two of our rental properties in 10 years in different stages of the market, we saw our probability of success was still high. We always ranked in the high 90s, which gave me a peace of mind and encouragement to continue on with the plan. We also knew these were just projections. There are many factors that could cause this data to be completely different, but we know these are the most likely market return scenarios based on the last 90 years. I also read many blogs from people in the FIRE community. A few that I love are JL Collins, Mr. Money Mustache, Early Retirement Now, and Millennial Revolution. My favorite books are The Little Book of Common Sense Investing and The Simple Path to Wealth. And unfortunately, they didn't have any YouTube channels about FIRE in 2018. But now I really like to watch Rob Berger. Our investment philosophy seems to be very similar. I highly recommend watching him if you really want to educate yourself on all aspects of investing. Our Rich Journey and Financial Tortoise are great channels for people just starting out. I also love to listen to podcasts, and Choose Buy is one of my favorites, along with Bogleheads Live and The Long View. The one thing I knew for sure is that we we're leaving Northern Virginia. We would have a much better quality of life in a state with a much lower cost of living. I had learned the term geo-arbitrage, and I knew that we should consider lower cost of living areas, such as states with no income taxes or lower housing prices. Rents in Denver, Colorado and Orlando, Florida were much lower than the Fairfax in 2018. We definitely plan on renting for the first few years in retirement. We wanted to travel to find our ultimate place to live, and we didn't want to rush into buying something without being sure that this plan was working and that we'll be comfortable living outside of the U.S. So we had three options of where to retire. Stay in Northern Virginia. We lived in Virginia for over 20 years. We liked it there. Our friends and son lived there, but the cost of living was very high. It also gets hot and humid in the summer and cold and snowy in the winter. Two moved to a lower cost of living state. We considered Denver and Florida. We had great friends and family in both states. The cost of living and real estate was lower than Northern Virginia, and Florida has no state income tax. But we'd still be dealing with the snow in Colorado and the heat and humidity in Florida. And let's not forget the outrageously high health insurance premiums and out-of-pocket medical costs in the USA. Or three, live outside of the US, which we hadn't even thought about at that time. We wanted to stay close to our son. We needed, some time off we needed some time off to relax before we pulled this early retirement stunt. There was a lot of factors to consider and we we're kind of getting a little stressed. So we took a vacation to beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We had a wonderful time relaxing and refueling. All that delicious tequila made me so happy. And then I thought, Hey, we could live here. It's inexpensive. The exchange rate was great at approximately 18 pesos to the dollar. And if we were watchful and transferred money from USD to pesos when the exchange rate was best, it could mean even more savings every month. It's south of the US border. The weather is one of the best in the world. I speak Spanish fluently. Mexico is a country with a rich and diverse culture and one of the best in the world in food hadn't really considered living outside the USA, but I was excited for the opportunity. I'd traveled quite a bit, but it's entirely different experiencing the culture while living there on a day-to-day -day basis. We considered other countries in South America that were also low cost of living, but neither one of us wanted to be that far to start off. And Mexico seemed like a perfect solution. We learned that it had one of the easiest residency permit application processes and requirements in the Americas and it would give us a really good idea of how far our money would go. It'd be a really soft landing for my first time living outside the U.S. We thought it'd be an excellent country to try geographic arbitrage. And after running the numbers and seeing how much more money we would have available for living and traveling, Mexico was definitely the best option for us to begin early retirement. We had to think about our stuff. A house full of it. Furniture, collections, decor, just crap. Do we keep some? Do we sell it all? Donate it? 
we would have kept more things if we were staying in the U.S. But since Mexico came into play, it would have been a complete nightmare and expensive logistical nightmare to move our stuff across the border. Although easier than moving to another continent, we just needed a clean slate. We were going through the biggest decision of our lives. It's our next chapter in life, and we decided to start fresh. It's not easy letting go of most of your stuff. Family heirlooms, gifts from loved ones, your favorite gadgets, clothing, furniture. It's incredible what you collect over time and the great importance you allow it to hold over you. We knew it would be hard selling, donating, and giving it away, but I figured if we were able to do so, then it was a good sign we were ready to make this big move. We did not want to be burdened by material objects, and thus, our new motto came about and was recited over and over. Memo. Memories and experiences over materials and objects. I spent my childhood in Bolivia, South America. I grew up in a land culture and spoke Spanish fluently. I was actually excited to reconnect with my Latin roots. But I wasn't prepared for the adult stuff, like bureaucracy, taxes, slow processes, housing laws. Although I was familiar with the culture, Mexico had its differences. We researched everything about the country. We watched YouTube videos about expats living in Mexico. We joined several Facebook groups. We especially focused on the safety and security of living in a country known for its cartel activities. The most talked about cities among expats were Puerto Vallarta, Playa del Carmen, San Miguel de Allende, Merida, Tulum, Guanajuato, Ajijic, and a few more beach towns. I personally didn't like the beach side because it gets super hot in the summer, especially in Merida. The humidity in Puerto Vallarta is exhausting, and although Diane's Spanish was okay, she would have to rely on speaking it a lot more in a smaller town, which would make it difficult for her in the beginning. I also wanted to be near a city, but Mexico City was simply too massive and prone to earthquakes. So that left us with the next largest city, Guadalajara and the state of Jalisco. We absolutely loved our first scouting trip to Guadalajara. A good sized city with a little bit of everything. There were huge parks, a ton of entertainment, and an active expat community. I quit my job. It was uh, 2017 when we decided for me to retire first and quit working for the man. It was one of the happiest days of my life. The feeling of freedom is indescribable and yet scary. We needed to test our monthly spending without my salary for about a year. I split my time helping Diane with her work and also handle the logistics for the move. We tracked our spending closely and did pretty good. You'd be surprised how many things you can cut cost in that you don't even think about or need 